Hello everyone. So I'm going to do a just a free flow reading, just whatever wants to come out. We're going to see what's going on here. We're going to see what the energy is. Don't try to make it fit if it doesn't resonate. This is going to be for a specific energy group. I'm going to be doing more of these just, you know, free flow readings, just whatever the cards want to say. So some of them will be your energy group and some of them will not be your energy group. So we have Knight of Pentacles, Eight of Swords, the High Priestess, the Magician, the Ten of Wands, interesting, the Ace of Swords, the Four of Cups, the Queen of Swords, the Hanged Man, the sun, let's see, sorry about that, okay, so I had to go get my phone because there was actually this quote that I screenshot earlier because I was going to share it with you guys, I knew it was going to come up in one of the readings, but it's from another reader that I like, and I'm getting the same energy here, so I think that's that energy group. Um, I feel like with the Knight of Pentacles, the Knight of Pentacles is, they're very stable, they're very grounded, they're very practical, but there's not, it's, it's not a very passionate or romantic energy. And I feel like this person here was coming forward slowly to this high priestess, but I almost feel like it was... It was self-sabotage in a way. It's like they were trying to perfect themselves. They were trying to put on a... They didn't know that this high priestess could already see right through them. They were trying to maintain their image. This person might care a lot about what people think. It's like, I, I feel like basically what I'm getting is perfectionism is a form of self-sabotage. And so I feel like this person was coming forward towards this high priestess very slowly. Like they were planning it out. You know what I mean? They were thinking, oh, once I get my finances in order, they could be financially struggling, struggling and they might have thought once I get my finance, finances in order, I'm going to make... Um, some kind of offer to this high priestess or once I once I look the way I physically want to look I'm going to make some offer or once my mental health is at this certain point somebody who's just kind of it's like love is just forever out of reach when they meet one goal they they sabotage themselves by coming up with another goal that they have to meet before they can possibly be ready for love it's it's somebody who used to sabotage themselves in toxic ways. And I feel like now they've just come up with a new way to sabotage themselves, which is basically by being a perfectionist, by thinking that they have to be mentally and physically and emotionally perfect for this high priestess before they can make any sort of offer to her or to him. Um, if I say her or him, and you know, it's, you know, it could be two men, it could be two women, um, if I say her, but you know, it's a male, just, just take it as it resonates. Um, don't get caught up on gender. Just put, you know, place people in the roles that fit and only take this if it resonates. It's only, it's either your energy group or it isn't, you know, a lot of these free flow readings are just, they're going to be different random energy groups. So, so don't try to force anything to fit. But, but yeah, I feel like this person here was sabotaging themselves by trying to perfect themselves for this high priestess. And they just cared way too much about their image. It's, it's like they were trying to, they were trying to maintain a certain image. They might have been worried about what other people think. They might have worried about what people would think about this connection as well. Because I feel like with the Eight of Swords, it's like they were, it, it, it's like on the, on the outside, it appeared like they were making progress, like they were making some sort of, like, like they wanted to appear stable. They wanted to, you know, appear as somebody who, not, not stable, but, um, it's kind of like they they presented an image to the world. On the outside, it appeared like this person was just, you know, being logical, taking their time, you know, thinking things through, making the right approach. But again, really deep down, it was there was a lot of self-sabotage going on, trying to be perfect. Like I said, when they would meet one goal, they would come up with another goal. It's like they just kind of it's like love was just kind of forever out of reach. They would keep coming up with reasons not to be passionate, not to be romantic, not to to come forward. You know what I mean? Like one of those people that kind of 
thinks about calling you or they think about making a commitment to you. They think about taking things to the next level, but they always come up with, there's always some, some reason why they don't, you know what I mean? There's always, Oh, I'll do it next week. I'll call them next week. I'll, I'll make the effort next week. Or, you know, like I said, like when I, when I'm, you know, when I get that job promotion, I'll, you know, then I'll be ready for love. It, it's like, it's just forever out of reach. It was self-sabotage and this high priestess could see through it. Um, anyway, I wanted to share something with you guys. So this is a screenshot I took from a reader on here that I really like. And what she said was, so she said, let me share this magical key with you right here. People mistake your silence for submission and also mistake your quiet observation for you letting things slide or for them getting away with something. And in knowing that, playing dumb is your biggest superpower. You really learn a thing or two about a person that way. Lean back and you'll learn everything that you need to know. Take it further and feed into the bullshit for a minute or two here and there, and you'll learn even more. Watch how they move. Watch how this person moves, especially when they think they have power over you, control over you, or when they think that they're outsmarting you. So I think that what this, what's, and it's five, five, five on the clock as I'm, as I'm recording this video, five, you know, fives represent change. Um, what I'm getting here is that this person underestimated you. They were able to put on this front, put on this image with other people, but you could see right through them. And I almost feel like, how do I explain this? I I think that they were afraid that if you saw who they really are, I feel like they tried to hide their shadow self. I feel like this is almost somebody who like is in denial about them having, or at least in the past, I feel like they've been in denial of their shadow side. I feel like this is somebody who they, they didn't want to do the shadow work. They didn't want to, there's certain things that they, I don't want to say they didn't want to heal those things, but there's certain traumas from their past. And I feel like they suppressed those traumas for so long that they were afraid that if they really were honest with themselves and looked at those traumas and allowed them to come up, that it would just be like a flood. Like the floodgates would just open. They wouldn't be able to handle all those traumas. Like they feel like they might just go crazy. Like they, they might, there might be certain traumas too that they're trying to like suppress that they don't want to remember certain things. Um, what is it called? I think it's like cognitive dissonance or it's, it's, it's almost like a, like, like they're like, you know, just this bias, like they didn't want to do the shadow work. They wanted to suppress certain things about themselves. And I, I and they, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, like I said, I think they're afraid that if you saw the real them, that you might not like what you see They're. I, I think that they're now realizing that you already knew who they were. You already saw all these things and you loved them anyway. You know, all the traumas that they thought they were hiding from you, all the, you know, whatever secrets they were hiding from you, whatever toxic patterns they had. I, I think that you're with the high priestess, you're very intuitive. Like you, you know, this woman already knew all these things about this man. She was already aware of his patterns, his trauma, his past, even things. He didn't need to say anything. She could pick up on it. She's, this is somebody who's psychic or they're just very intuitive. Um, so the high priestess, you know, she observes, but she doesn't always speak. She's just, she's very wise, um, you know, very intuitive, but she just kind of observes. And it's kind of like what that quote was saying, what I, what I was just reading to you guys, where it's, it's like, she might've played dumb or she might've, you know, just been taking notes of, of what this man was doing or even what he wasn't doing. And she might not, he, I think he mistook that. I really do think he mistook that as her letting things slide when really she was just, you know, she was just observing. The high priestess knows all there's, you can't hide anything from the high priestess. The high priestess is aware of everything. If there's a third party, she knows about it. If there's, if there's outside interference, whatever, the, whatever's going on, she knows about it. She's, she's very psychic. Um, and I think that this this man here is is realizing this about this woman. That, you know, again, the high priestess doesn't really speak. She's just she just kind of sits there, she observes, she takes, she takes she takes notes, 
which can be misinterpreted as her letting things slide, but that's really not the case. Um, so I, I feel like, you know, she's gathered all this information and I think it's coming as a shock to this man. I don't, I think that, I, I really think that he, I, I don't think he realized that she knew as much as she did. I don't think he realized, I really thought, I think that he, if he was playing games, I think he thought, you know, that he was winning some sort of game here. And then, you know, she just kind of pulled one on him and she, and he's like, oh, wait a minute. Like, like he's just shocked right now is what I'm getting with the magician. I feel like she's coming forward with what she knows too. I feel like she's because the high priestess doesn't really take action. Like I said, she just observes, but with the magician here, I, I feel like, cause the magician is, it can be magic, but the magician is also just as a person, the magician is somebody that takes action. The magician is somebody who, you know, they're very powerful. So I feel like this high priestess is in her power. She's gathered the information and this is coming to light. Um, I feel like with a ton of wands here too, I feel like this man has mixed feelings about this high priestess knowing so much. So on one hand, I feel like maybe it was kind of a burden for him to have this mask on for so long. I feel like most people, she can see right through him. I feel like most people can't see through this man, though. Most people do buy the, you know, the facade that he puts on. He might even be having financial issues, and he's convinced everybody that he's financially well off when he's actually financially struggling for some. Because um, there's a lot that goes on behind closed doors. Who he is in public and who he is behind the scenes are, are very different people. But I, I feel like with the Ten of Wands here... And not saying that he's like a bad person behind the scenes or anything like that. I'm just saying that there's, there's, um, he chooses what aspects of his personality to show. This, this isn't a man that just, you know, you know, goes with what he feels. This is somebody who chooses almost like he sees connections as some kind of game that he has to win. Um, which is, you know, he's, he's going to lose if he sees connections like that. You can't with the high priestess and the magician. No, he's. If he wants to make it a game, he's going to lose. Um, but this is somebody who does this in most of their connections. It's not just romantic. It's It could be family family relationships, friendship as well, where it's, it's like he has these, like he wants to appear a certain way. He wants to, he doesn't want to admit when he needs help necessarily, or he doesn't want to, you know, show certain sides of himself. But I feel like almost like he feels some sense of relief too that, you know, she does know him that deeply. I don't think he thought anybody knew him that deeply. Ten of Wands is, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. It's like somebody having all this weight, all this pressure on them. And then they get to this point where they just kind of break where they can't take anymore. And I feel like that's what this man is going through. Like, I just feel like it's kind of a shock to him that she knows as much as she does. I think it does really freak him out a little bit. Um, but I think it also makes him, it's like he has mixed feelings on it. It does kind of scare him a little bit, but it also makes him feel like this sense of relief. Because like I was saying, he did kind of get, he, he did kind of feel like, like if she saw those aspects of him, she wouldn't want him anymore. So there was this, it, it was almost like he was at war with himself, kind of like he was putting on this image, um, you know, trying to be a certain way. And it, it, I think it's kind of a relief to him for him to know that she already is aware of all those things. So there's no need for the mask because the mask isn't going to fool her. She's already seen right through it. So even though it's a little bit scary for him, I think he's kind of relieved that he has no choice but to just take the mask off now since she knows everything anyway. What's what's the point of the mask? There's no point in the mask if she already knows all this. Um, and like I said, this includes being aware of like if there's any third parties, like she might have just observed and he might have just taken that as her. And it's not saying that it, there might not be third party for, third parties for all of you. But for those of you that there was like a third party situation, I feel like, you know, I feel like she already knew about it. She already picked up on it, even if she didn't say anything. She just kind of, you know, observed and, and watched him and and let him show her what he's going to do. You know what I mean? Like she's not, the high priestess is very powerful. She's not going to force this knight of pentacles to be a real man. 
she's he's either going to be a real man or he isn't going to be you know what I mean like she'll she'll watch him and she'll she'll observe but it is ultimately up to him you you know she's going to be in her feminine role she's going to be the feminine is very powerful but she's she's not going to take on the masculine role she's going to stay powerful in her feminine energy um, and it's up to him ultimately if he's going to step up and show her that he's a real man or if he's not um but I mean, she's not really going to do that for him. She's going to, you know what I mean? It's like she just kind of observes and, and lets, you know, lets him show her what, what he's going to do or what he's not going to do. But yeah, I just, I feel like it's like a really a relief to this person because they, there's just no sense of, of even having a mask with her anymore because she's seen through it. He might have even gotten a, a reading on this person because there's something that came out recently where I think he really recognized that this woman is psychic. Like, I don't think he... She might have said something to him as well. Like, there might have been a conversation that took place where maybe she called him out on some things or she just... Maybe they had, like, a kind of in-depth, vulnerable conversation or he could be thinking about things that she said in the past as well. But there's something, there's some kind of energy shift here where I just get the sense that, you know, he has this, he's, he has like a new perspective. He's looking at this differently, where I think before he thought he was being sneaky. He thought he was, you know, hiding things from her. He thought he was hiding aspects of his personality from her. He thought he was hiding his past traumas from her. But the truth has come out that, you know, that she knows all, that she knows, that she knows everything. She knows she's... She's aware of, of whatever he was trying to hide, be it personality, be it third parties. It's going to be different for everybody. But whatever it was, he's he's he knows that she knows about it now. He knows that she knows. Um, with the Ace of Swords and the, the Four of Cups, I feel like I kind of feel like he's rejecting this truth. You know, especially with the Queen of Swords, it's almost like he's he's in the Queen of Swords energy, I think, where he's. It's like the truth came out, some kind of, something came out that basically forced him to face himself and forced him to face these traumas. It's kind of like his spirit guides tried to gently pull this mask off of him. Like his spirit guides were like, who the hell do you think you're fooling? Like you, you, you look dumb with that mask on, you know what I mean? Like his spirit guides were like, what are you doing? Like his, his spirit guides have been working with him for a while. And I feel like his spirit guides really tried to work with him gently. They really did try to gently get him to take this mask down. Cause I'm just getting like this visual of somebody like wearing this mask and like, they look, they, I'm sorry, but they look ridiculous. And like they, they don't, it's, it's almost like they're, they're trying to present an image to people and it, it, they don't, they don't look how they think they look. <laughs> I, I guess that's a good way to say it. Cause I keep getting this visual where it's like this person like has this mask on and they kind of gently, you know, take the mask off and they look in the mirror and then they get freaked out because of the vulnerability, because they're exposed, because they're forced to face all these past traumas and all these, you know, aspects of themselves uh, maybe like a suppressed romantic emotional side that they don't want, want to deal with. Maybe, um, you know, abuse and childhood trauma, things like that. Just so many things that they have not wanted to face that they've been suppressing for a long time. So I just get this visual. It's like this person like takes the mask off and they kind of like peek in the mirror and they look at themselves, but they feel exposed. Like I'm almost, I'm almost getting like a physical sensation with it. Almost like when the mask is off, it's like, it, it's, it's almost like somebody that like, how to explain it like, like they just they, they feel just exposed but in, in like a negative way like they feel like they don't feel safe without the mask on and you know th so they keep putting it back on and then their spirit guides try to get them gently you know take it off and it's just been a kind of a struggle back and forth and I feel like the mask got ripped off recently and I think they're kind of like relieved. Like I said, with the Ten of Wands, it's like the straw that broke the camel's back. Like this person might be kind of hitting rock bottom in a way mentally where they're like, like they, they don't, it's like our spirit guides do get impatient with us. You know, it's kind of a common misconception that they don't, they, they honestly do. Our spirit guides have, a lot of people have this mentality where they think that like spirits are just perfect and pure and 
you know, they just all have good intentions. No, there's there's all kinds of different deities out there. There's all kinds of different spirits out there, negative, positive, you know, gray. There's they, they have their own agendas. Um, so, you know, your spirit guides can get impatient with you, even if they love you, even if they support you and want the best for you, they can still get impatient with you. And I feel like this man's spirit guides have gotten pretty impatient with him because I just get the sense where they let him keep that mask as like a, you know, it, it made him feel safe. So they let him take it. They let him keep it. And I just feel like it got ripped off recently where he doesn't get to put the mask back on. Like they're not, he's begging his spirit guides for the mask and they're saying, no, you, you don't, you're done with it. You're, you're not, you don't get to put it back on. You're exposed now. Um, the truth is coming out like. You're, you do without what you want to do with it, but you're not getting the mask back. You know, people, people are, I am getting another message with that too, that it, it might be in the community as well. It might not just be this, this, um, you know, high priestess and magician that sees through him. It might be other people as well, where it's like, if he tries to put on a certain image, he might, There, there might, he might just be more exposed than he even realizes, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like people, people in the community might start, um, what is this energy I'm getting? Like he doesn't have that wall anymore. Like the wall isn't really an option for him. His spirit guides aren't allowing that, that mask, that wall to come back up. So it's kind of like, like even with like friends and family members too, like they might point out certain things that he would rather hide from people. It's kind of like this person is just exposed for all to see. And I'm not saying that this person's a bad person. I'm not saying that this man is a bad man. I'm just saying that the truth is out. If this person has third parties, there's the, the truth is coming out to multiple people. Um, if this person has, you know, traumas from the past, it's like th these these are coming out to be dealt with. Like all this stuff is coming out to be dealt with. Um, if this person lied about anybody in the community, like it's it's coming out. You know what I mean? Like that truth is being revealed. Um, but I mean, it's ultimately with this man's best interest at heart. Like, this, the, you know, the spirit guides aren't doing it to like punish him or hurt him or anything like that. It's just it's the gentle approach didn't work. You know, our spirit guides will try to work with us. They'll try to do it our way. But if that doesn't work, like, you know, and this man's felt that. I think this man, even if he's not fully psychically aware, I think he has some awareness of his spirit guides. He might not know, like, what they are, but I think that he has some, like, feeling of, like, the energies around him, if that makes sense. Um... And maybe even like feels their impatience with him a little bit. But like I said, it's like they're not like trying to punish him or hurt him. It's not it's not like that. Karma, karma isn't really like, oh, the universe is out to get you. It's more like the universe is balancing things out, you know, you know, truth is being revealed. Clarity is coming in here, basically. Um. So, so yeah, it's like, you know, his spirit guides do have his best interests at heart. They tried to work with him. They tried to do things his way. They tried to negotiate with him. They tried to be gentle with him. They, they tried to be patient and understanding and kind of, you know, do things slowly and ease him into things, ease him into his psychic awakening, ease him into healing these past traumas, ease him into getting back in touch with, you know, his softer side and, you know, as, you know, aspects of himself that he suppressed aspects of his personality that he suppressed, you know, they tried to ease him into all of this. And it's like he would take a few steps forward and then 10 steps back. And his spirit guides have gotten sick of that. So it's like now he's now they're doing things his spirit guides way they're they're taking there's divine intervention. His spirit guides are coming through and they're doing things his their way now. You know, um, they're not as opening, uh, they're not as open to negotiating with this man anymore. And now they're just, you know, they're doing what they need to do. And it might be like a rock bottom moment from him for him. It might be like a dark night of the soul type of energy that comes through that, um, you know, initiates this new perspective, this um, psychic awakening. But I mean, there's happiness here, the sun, this is all all the things that are coming to light, they are you know, they are so he can be happy, so he can be his true self, so he can heal his traumas, so he can, you know, be the person that he wants to be so that he can move past the energies that have been keeping him stagnant in his life. But yeah, at first, he's going to try to reject this truth. He's going to try to, he's, he's going to try to, um, 
He's going to try to reject this truth, going to try to, or he has in the past, but it, it's like, then you're suspended. You're suspended. And then, you know, this person's hanging by their foot. They're just, they're not going anywhere. They're stagnant until they have this new perspective, until they allow, nothing's going to move in this man's life. Nothing, love's not going to come in. Money's not going to come in. Nothing's going to come in for this man until he's, you know, open to his spirit guides and to his psychic awakening, to his sp spiritual awakening, to, you know, healing and being the person he wants to be. So let's look more into this. So tell me more about the situation with, um, well, let's just see, let's see what the cards want to say. Page of Pentacles, Eight of Wands, the Lovers, Justice, Death, which a death is often like a death and rebirth process. Yeah, he's being forced to take responsibility for himself. There's divine justice here. I see this as like spirit guide intervention. Eight of Wands could be travel, it could be messages, but I see like a death and rebirth process. Tell me more about this situation with the, um, let me see here. Let's look more into this high priestess, because yeah, I feel like she knew, like I said, she knew... She knew everything. She knew if this man was trying to play games or if there was like certain subconscious patterns he was repeating or if there's certain, you know, his intentions, his motives, his, uh, you know, patterns, um, uh, you know, communication, just I feel like anything like that. It's like she was she was aware of it. She 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 could feel it. She could intuitively just sense you know, what was going on there. I feel like he's, like I said, I think that he's very shocked about that. I really feel like he thought that she was just naive or he thought, it's almost like maybe he thought it was like a game and he thought he was winning some kind of game here, but it's like she really knew what was going on all along. Um, so I think he's very shocked to to realize just how intuitive this high priestess is here. Sorry, I'm trying to explain that properly. So it's like whatever game he was playing, like if he was playing games, and that's that's only for some of you, but if this man was playing games, it's like she was aware of those games all along. She was aware of the intention behind him playing the game. She was aware of what he was trying to do. She was aware of the exact game that he was playing. Like she, you know what I mean? Like she just, she might not have said anything. Again, the high priestess is all knowing, but she doesn't necessarily speak on what she observes. She just take, takes notes. She just observes what this man does do or what he doesn't do. You know, sometimes what you don't do is just as impactful as what you do do. Um, but yeah, whatever, ga whatever games he might have been playing, it's like she was aware of it all the time. You know what I mean? She, she knew what was going on and he thought that, yeah, he really, he really underestimated her and he is getting a rude awakening now, basically, um, coming to this realization that, you know, she, she saw through him all along. She knew what was going on all along. And like I said, it kind of, you know, it kind of makes him happy in a way, like it really scares him and overwhelms him because that mask is off and like he's realizing that she was aware the whole time of like any games he was playing or anything that was going on behind the scenes. She knew, even if she didn't say anything, she knew. But it kind of makes him happy too in a way because it's like there's this sense of peace that comes with that because he's like, oh wow, like she, she did see these traumas. She did see my dark side. She did see... um other aspects of my personality that I thought I was hiding from her and she loved me anyway. She still loved me. She still wanted to work with me. She still wanted to build something with me. She still supported me. Like she really saw exactly who I am, all the good and all the bad. And she loved me unconditionally and, you know, still wanted to be with me. So, so it's, it's almost like it, it brings him this sense of peace because that was something he was really afraid of. He was afraid of, you know, he thought he was hiding those, you know, certain things from her. And he was afraid that if the truth come out, came out, she wouldn't want him anymore. But little did he know the truth was out all along. The truth was those, those truths were never even hidden to begin with. She just didn't come out and say anything about it. But, you know, all those truths were known by her all along. Um, 
But yeah, this person made a big mistake underestimating a high priestess. You do not underestimate a high priestess. You think you're playing some kind of game with her, and before you know it, she's won. You won't even know what hit you. But anyway, let me look more into this. What's, um... Let's see. What do I want to ask here? So tell me more about this, about this mask being off. The star healing. Nine of swords. Nine of cups. Yeah, this person is having a lot of anxiety about having to do about, you know, about the mask being off. Like I said, they're having a lot of anxiety about ha being forced to do the healing work about this divine intervention. Um, your, you know, spirit guides coming in and basically just forcing these changes because this person didn't want to, you know, if you don't want to learn the easy way, you're going to learn the hard way. Um, but they're realizing that if they want their wish fulfillment, they're, they're going to have to complete those old karmic cycles. Yeah, because this woman, I think, is is in her empress energy. The empress is the, you know, the empress and the high priestess are the most powerful women in the deck. It's like I was saying before, where it's like the high priestess observed for, for months or for years, you know, she observed this man and watched everything he did do, everything he didn't do. You know, she's, she's going to let him show her whether he's a real man or not, basically. And I think with her being the, she's the empress now. So the empress is, is all four queens combined. She's the queen of wands, swords, cups, and pentacles. She, she has everything. The empress is very powerful. So is the high priestess. And so with you, with the woman here coming out as the empress, I think that's partially why these changes are coming through because he's recognizing that she's, you know, you have to be an emperor if you want your empress. You, you can't you can't come to an empress with this little like knight of pentacles energy like oh i'm working on it maybe eventually we'll you know maybe eventually we'll be together or maybe you know like you you can't come to an empress with a half ass energy she's going to see right through you she's not going to tolerate that and like i said for the, for the longest time this woman was the high priestess she was just observing she was taking notes she was you know being patient and understanding and gentle with this man um, and with the magician, it's kind of like, I think at some point she's like taking action. She's like, okay, well, I was patient and understanding and it got me nowhere. I, you know, I said nothing. I just observed. I was aware of all these patterns, but, you know, being patient and understanding with this man really just did not get me anywhere. It was just that, you know, he just did the same shit over and over again. Um, So, so yeah, I think she's kind of gone from being the high priestess to being, you know, again, the magician, like somebody who the magician is like a master manifester. This is somebody who the magician is like action oriented. So it, it's kind of like, you know, taking action and like she's coming forward with the truth. She's coming forward with, even if she's not speak, even if she's not telling the truth directly to him, I just mean she's coming forward with the truth in like this sense that she's not just sitting back and observing anymore, um, which again was probably misinterpreted as her letting things slide. Uh, which was a huge mistake on his part to under underestimate a high priestess like that. Um, but, but yeah, it's like, she's not just being a passive observer anymore. She's, she's um, being more honest about what she's observed, what she's seen. You know what I mean? She's not just sitting there taking notes anymore. She's like, okay, I have enough information now. Um, you know, I've seen this pattern repeat enough times with this person. So I think that he's aware that if he wants this empress, he's going to have to come correctly to, to, her, to her. She's not going to be a queen of wands or cups or pentacles or swords for him. She's she's going to she's going to stay in her empress power and her energy. And the only way he's going to uh, to be with her to get her back is if he comes correctly, if he comes forward as an emperor if he really steps up, if he, you know, the Empress is like the mother figure of the deck too. She's nurturing. She could be connected to nature as well. Very powerful, very loving. Um, I'm hearing that quote. What is it? What is, what is that quote? Like she's fire. She can, she can warm your home. Like she can, you know, she can be useful to you or she can burn your house down. It really depends on how you treat her. 
you know, the energy you get from this empress depends on how you treat her, but she's, but she's staying in this energy either way. So yeah, and the emperor is a very powerful masculine energy. It's somebody who's assertive, dominant, somebody who goes after what they want. The emperor is like daddy energy right there. And it's not saying that this person has to be perfect. You know, they can still have their, they still have a lot of traumas. They still have a lot of things to work, work through, but you can be an emperor and still have traumas to work through. You can be an emperor and match this empress and still have, um, you know, things that you need to work on or issues. And in fact, I, I would say that's, that's more emperor energy than anything, because it takes a lot of bravery to be honest and vulnerable to, you know, admit that you have traumas. You know, a lot of these men, like no offense, but you know, these like macho men that just, you know, pretend like they have everything under control and they're just, they're good. Like they're, that, that's not alpha energy. You know what I mean? Like that, that's not alpha male energy, honestly. That's, that's not, like women see through that, like people don't get that. And I'm not saying that this man is like that necessarily, but I'm just saying like, let's say that, you know, just in general with men, again, not saying this man is like that, but let's just say like you're at a bar, you know, women see through that. If you're at a bar and you're, tr you're loud and obnoxious and you're competing with random people for no reason, you're talking over everybody. That's, that's not alpha male energy. You know what I mean? Like this empress knows that she can see right through it. That's, that's not alpha energy. That's it's screams of insecurity. And a lot of men don't understand that they think that they're being tough. They think they're showing off when, you know, these women can see right through them. Um, you know, true alpha males, that, that's going to be like the guy that's just kind of sitting there and he's observing, but he's strong and powerful and you can sense his energy. And if he needs to, he'll step up and he'll protect her. He's, you know, they're protectors and provider types. They will take care of things. They'll be assertive, but they know it's like they have tact. You know what I mean? Like they know how to do things properly. Um, they know they'll be aggressive if they have to be they have that in them but they won't just do it just to show off just for no reason they know how to use their energy wisely a true alpha male is is very strong very assertive powerful um protective very protective he'll go after what he wants he'll do the pursuing you know a real emperor is going to pursue the empress he's going to plan dates he's going to make time for her he's going to make effort for her he's going to you know, he's going to be the one to message first, to call first, to, to plan things out. You know, that's, that's true alpha energy. That's true masculine energy. And so anyway, I got on kind of a rant there, but the point I was making is I, I feel like, yeah, I feel like he's having anxiety because he's realizing if he wants this wish fulfillment, he's going to have to complete those old cycles and heal those old patterns. She's, she's not going to go back to that. She's not going to deal with that again. She's, she's not going to go back to, to mind games to, if there was third parties, she's definitely not, not entertaining anybody that has third parties. Um, she's, she's not dealing with any type of games. She's not dealing with, um, in and out hot and cold energy. She's not dealing with emotional unavailability or inconsistency. Like she knows exactly what she deserves and she's staying true to that. And if this man wants that with her, he's going to have to step forward or somebody else will, you know, for some of you, not for all of you, for some of you, you are waiting for this man, but for others, you know, you're open to other people. You're open to whoever wants to be the emperor to match your empress energy. But, um, yeah, let me look more into this anyway. But yeah, like I said, this person could be the emperor and still, you know, be damaged, still have a lot of, th of things to work through because it's still, to me, like a true alpha, like true masculine energy is, is part of that is being vulnerable, being romantic, being emotional, because it's anybody can just shut down. That's not, you know, that's cowardly, but to really open yourself and be, be vulnerable and express your feelings and go after the woman you love, um, making the effort, like that's that's sexy energy that's very that's masculine energy you know what i mean so this emperor can be damaged because like i said that that's true masculine energy that's true brave bravery to be able to be vulnerable and honest and you know accept that you need help and admit your flaws admit your weaknesses admit the things that you need to work on 
admit a true alpha is willing to admit that he doesn't know everything you know like we're constantly going through a, a learning and unlearning process it's okay to change your opinions on things it's okay to um to you know admit you're wrong or to change your perspective on things it's you know it's the insecure afraid men that usually hold on to just one perspective their entire lives and they're they're just so unwilling to think outside that box they're so unwilling to you know admit if they're wrong or change their change their opinions but it's it's like a true alpha male will will gladly you know change their perspective and change their opinions if there's new information that comes in that leads to that they're willing to grow they're willing to to evolve to change in the right ways to to be the person they want to be you know what i mean they're willing to um you know admit their their flaws and, and admit the things that they need to heal and, and that they need to work on you know they're willing to be honest and, and vulnerable and transparent that's that's true you know masculine energy right there is is um you know, that honesty and vulnerability. But yeah, this person, sorry, I went on a tangent there. But this person is, um, yeah, he's having some anxiety because he's recognizing if he wants this wish fulfillment, he's going to have to heal. There's, there's no going back to the old patterns there. You know, he knows that she knows all of it. He knows that she sees right through him. So he knows that those games aren't going to work. He knows he's either going to get called out or just get ignored if he tries playing those games again with her. She's not, she has a new perspective too, and she's not going back to that shit. So, so yeah, there's some anxiety there because he knows if he wants this wish fulfillment, he's going to have to step up and, and be in the emperor energy to, to match her because she's the empress now. Um, tell me more about, about, uh, what he wants to do and, and, you know, why these changes came into place and what's going on. Six of Swords, Queen of Cups, King of Wands. Yeah, he's kind of realizing it's on him to move this relationship from rough waters to calmer waters. Six of Swords is like that new start, like going, like, you know, it's like he's taking control and, and you know, it's, there's like rough water here and then calmer water here. And he's like, he's, he's in charge here. And this person it could be, it could be a woman with a child too, but he knows that he has to take the lead and move this connection forward to calmer waters if he wants this to go anywhere. Um, and if he wants her to be a queen of cups, if he wants her in that gentle, loving energy, he's aware that he's going to have to, you know, make those make those changes and take accountability and make that effort king of wands nine of wands three of swords why the three of swords seven of wands knight of wands tell me more about the three of swords hmm. Okay, I see what it's saying. Yeah, because because he's he knows that he's gonna get his heart broken if he Knight of Wands can be very passionate, but Knight of Wands is also like, it can be like f boy energy, honestly, or it can also be somebody that's very hot and cold, very in and out. Like, oh, I'll be here one minute and then the next minute I'm gone, like ghosting, unavailable. He he knows that if he comes forward with that energy, she's gonna be defensive. She's not he's she's not gonna be the Queen of Cups for him if he's hot and cold like this. If he's inconsistent, if he's not showing affection, if he's not pursuing her, he's he's you know, it's just gonna be heartbreak. She he she's not doing it. She's gonna be guarded with him. She's only gonna be vulnerable if he gives her a safe space to be vulnerable. If he gives her a good reason to be vulnerable. If, if you know then it, then she'll be vulnerable she's gonna match his energy if he's being vulnerable she'll be vulnerable but if he's being cold and distant so will she it's up to him so so yeah there's it, it's a beautiful thing though because the ball because this divine feminine energy i'm getting she's she's in her feminine energy and she's staying in the feminine energy so that's a really good thing that she is not willing to take on the masculine role for him anymore she's she's put her foot down she's like i'm not going to be the man in this connection or i'm not going to be i'm not going to be in the masculine energy in this connection anymore you know she's staying in her power she's staying in her feminine energy she's letting things come to her she might even with a magician she might even be in a period where she's just in her power and just manifesting just 
you know, not necessarily even doing magic, but just manifesting in general, like just aligning herself with people that are going to love her properly with, you know, the right places with money, which does, you know what I mean? Just, just being in that energy of, of calling forth the people that calling forth the right situations and the right people. But yeah, he has this awareness that if he, if he's hot and cold, she's, you know, it's just going to be heartbreak. She's just going to be guarded with him. She's, yeah, she'll only be vulnerable if he's going to be vulnerable. She's going to follow his lead and she's going to match his energy. At least right now, I mean, if he takes too long, there could be another man that comes in. Because I was getting the energy of, you know, that's a, that's an energy that's come through a lot lately is, is new love. So. so at least at this point, she is still receptive, but only if he comes properly. She's probably pretty fed up and pretty annoyed, but I mean, she's still, you know, there is still love here. But he would have to really make some effort there. He'd have to really show her. You know, he has to really show her something at this point if he wants her to be open. Anyway, tell me more about like what is, um, okay, so this man like doesn't like that the mask is off, even though there's some relief, you know, it's still kind of scary to him that, that she sees through him. Tell me more about his energy though and how he feels about that and what he wants to do next. Wheel of Fortune. He's getting, yeah, he's getting bad karma, honestly. Wheel of Fortune, the devil. Southern of Cups, Four of Wands, Six of Wands, King of Swords. Why the King of Swords? Ace of Wands, the Emperor, Four of Swords. Yeah, I think he is wanting to become the Emperor. I mean, I think there's, there's meditation and healing that has to come with that. Why the Five of Pentacles? Two of Cups. Yeah, again, I think it's I think it's partially just because, like I said, she stepped into her power and she, and he has this awareness that he's you know that he might lose her if he if he doesn't do something. So he's finding that balance because he has to. He has no other choice if he wants to keep her. You know, she probably already barely trusts him, or maybe even doesn't trust him at all. So there's already a lot of work to do. So I think he kind of recognizes that he can't really afford to sabotage this anymore because it, it's to that point where it's like he's going to if he keeps sabotaging, he's going to sabotage for good this time. She's not doing it. She, she's, she doesn't have patience for the self-sabotage anymore. Um, there's something here, though. There's, let me see this. It's interesting. So we have the Wheel of Fortune, the Devil, and the Seven of Cups, and the Four of Wands. Tell me more about that. I honestly feel like he has bad karma and I don't want to, and I'm not saying that as like the universe is punishing him or anything dramatic like that. Like, that's not what I'm trying to say. I think it's more like, you know, the universe, you, it, karma is about balancing things out. Like if you make fun of homeless people your whole life, if you just talk shit to homeless people, you might end up being homeless this life or the next. And it's not punishment. It's just the universe balancing it out so that you can see that perspective, so that you can see how homeless people feel, what they experience, what they go through every day, and you can have that empathy for them. And so I feel like this person that just got caught up in like multiple options, maybe multiple women, multiple men, who whatever they're dealing with, um, it's like there was like this illusion. There was this energy of like, I almost feel like for some of them, they might have thought they might, there might have been black. Well, we'll probably get into that in another reading, but then this is not for everybody. But for some, there might have actually been like a third party that did some kind of black magic that made them think for a while that the third party was the divine feminine and like their, their partner when it was just an illusion. So for some, you know, this, this, there was some kind of third party that got in the way of this man with his, you know, high priestess and uh, empress here. Or it might have also just been him just wanting to play the field and, you know, wanting multiple options. Like, do I want to be single? Do I want to do I want to go this route? Do I want to go this route? Do I want to go, um, you know, do I want to go with this person, this person? Like, you know, just just wanting to have their cake and eat it, too. And you, you can't put an empress on hold. The empress is not going to wait. She's, she's not. This woman is in her power. She's not waiting. 
she he's coming forward or somebody else is coming forward pretty much she she's not she she's not going to be put on hold and this man thought that he could put her on hold he thought that he could put her on hold and he thought that he could just come back when he was ready or when he played the field and saw what else was out there he he thought that he could put her on hold and she saw right through it and i think that's one of the things that pissed her off where she's like oh no i'm not an option i'm not an option I'm the first choice or I'm, I'm not doing it basically, you know? Um, but yeah, there might've been some kind of illusion there that got him confused and he went down a karmic path and kind of lost himself a little bit on that karmic path. But with the wheel of fortune, it's like in the devil too. The devil is about like subconscious patterns. It's about like chains. It's about, um, you know, just being tied up, being, uh, you know, addictions, just things like that it could even be like alcohol or drug addictions for some of these men. But, um, I really feel like, let me tell me more about this. Yeah. I feel like there's some kind of karma here. Like if he, if he tried to make this woman look bad, he's going to look bad. You know what I mean? Like if he's trying to tell only his side of the story, the truth is going to come out and people are going to see her side of the story too. It's that kind of energy. Or it's like, if he, you know, cheated or had a multiple women it's like then you know he's he's gonna there's just some kind of karmic rebalancing here basically I don't think he has as many options as he thinks he does either I think a lot of these people I think a lot of people are like seeing through that I think he's getting called out I think he's dealing with drama and conflict you know, with multiple people right now, honestly, I feel that is if it's not already there, I think it's coming in soon. I think there's going to be drama and conflict with people in this man's life. And again, not punishing him, but it's just, it's just the universe, you know, his spirit guys are kind of coming through and just taking care of things. Because I think this empress is tired. I think she's, she's like, you know, just deal with him, whatever. Like I, like she might love him, but she's, she's, she's not, She's not doing the game. She's not doing the shit with him anymore. So I think her spirit guides have kind of stepped in to just let her rest. And they're like, okay, we're going to do, we're going to take care. There's like divine intervention where her spirit guides are like, we're going to take care of this now. We're going to, we're going to figure this out for you now. You know what I mean? Where she's not being called to do anything right now. She's not being called to, you know, maybe she was doing protection spells on him in the past and she's not being led to do any spell work or anything now. She's just, she's just, you know regardless of what she feels negative or positive she's just chilling um yeah he might have thought he had multiple options but a lot of them were like illusion like there's like let's say for example he thought he would just put this empress on hold god you do not put an empress on hold but let's say for example he thought he would put this empress on hold and he thought he would just come back to her when he was ready um, he's going to find out that these other options he thought he had were illusions. They weren't, there's going to be like unexpected drama with these other women. Does that make sense? Where he's like, oh, I'm, I might try this path or this path. And it, it's going to, it's going to, and it's not like saying like, oh, he, he has to be with her or nobody. It's, it's not like that. It's not like a punishment. It's, it's more, it's more the fact that he thought he could put her on hold and he thought that he could go do this to her um, and come back whenever he felt like it. It's, it's again, more about like a karmic rebalancing here. Um, and honestly, this, this wouldn't happen to, I don't feel like if, if he just did this to this empress, I don't feel like the, the karma would be that bad, but I think he's done this to multiple people. This might be, he might've done this to other women as well. It might've been one of those things where he might have a history of cheating. He might have a history of like, you know, exploring his options and kind of trying to put people on hold and trying to just playing games and trying to, um, you know, trying to one up people and seeing relationships as games and not really considering other people's feelings, just, you know, wanting to just wanting to win, wanting to be right at all costs, basically, you know what I mean? And so I feel like it might be multiple people in the community that are going to call this man out or it's multiple people that are going to, um, how do I explain it? 
Like, I, I was getting this in another reading, too, where I was like, this man isn't, his spirit guides aren't going to let him do this to from woman to woman to woman. They're not going to let him just keep doing this to women. You know what I mean? It's not saying that he can only be with this one woman. It's like he, you know, it's not saying that. It's just saying that he's, he doesn't get, he's he can't do this to woman after woman after woman. It's not going to go well for him if he tries to do that. And I think maybe in the past he used women as like an escape, too, because he didn't want to to um, deal with himself. He didn't want to deal with his traumas, with his fears, with, you know, insecurities, things that he needed to work on. And so I feel like whenever, you know, if he got called out on something or if a woman saw through him or if he, you know, if there was confrontation, he'd be like, oh, she's toxic. I'm moving on to the next best thing. I'm going to go with somebody that's easier. Um, like he didn't want to look in the mirror. He didn't want to, you know, face the fact that, you know, maybe maybe there's something that he needs to work on on himself. Maybe, you know, it, it takes two to tango here. You know what I mean? Um, not saying all his relationships have been great. I'm sure there might have been toxic women in his life for sure. But but it's just kind of saying like they're, um, you know, he can't just go from woman to woman and just repeat the same patterns. And, you know, when women call him out and when, when, when women say, you know, I'm not going to be treated like this, he just kind of dismisses them like, oh, they're dramatic. So I'm going to go to the next best thing. I'm going to go to whatever's easier. Um, and then he's going to find that whatever the next best thing is, there's going to be drama there too. There's going to be issues there too. And then he's going to start, he, he is being forced to see this pattern now in his relationships where he's like, wait a minute, Maybe it's not a coincidence that all these women got jealous or all these women are telling me the same thing that I need to work on or all these women, you know, have the same problem with me being too busy for them or, or with this or that. You know what I mean? Um, and again, it's not just for these women's sake. It's not, you know, the, there, are, there are literally spirit guys that are protecting women from this man right now. But but it's not just about that. It's about him too. Like I said, his spirit guides really do love him and they want him to be happy. They want him to be supported. They want him to be in touch with his true self. Like he's gotten out of touch with his soul, with, with his higher self and his spirit guides want him to go through this psychic spiritual awakening and get in touch with his true self. And, you know, like I said, that requires looking in the mirror. If he's, you know, going from woman to woman and using them as distractions to avoid facing himself it's it's like it's not they're they're kind of forcing this man to be alone right now so that he has to deal with himself so that he has to to you know work on himself and he has to face himself and he has to work on being the man that he wants to be um and working directly with his spirit guides and and trusting them and and you know just th that's the ultimate path to his happiness to 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 peace to to stability um, you know, for some, they might even need some like counseling or just some kind of help, someone to talk to, to help them, you know, with these, you know, balancing things out. Um, let's see here. But yeah, I just, I feel like, I feel like he's gonna, I feel like he's dealing with drama with multiple people or he's about to deal with drama with multiple people. Or he's about, there's something with like a pattern that he's going to be made aware of is what I'm getting. So basically it's like, he might be dealing with like other women, but it's like they're going to, and it could be like family members, friends, it could be romantic, might not be though. But, but there's, there's going to be multiple people that are like, you know, telling him the same thing, basically. You know what I mean? Like there's... Like, like there's, there's no, he can't play any games anymore with anybody because they, they all people, you know, he's been called out. He's been seen through. There's, there's no more games that he can play. So it's going to make these changes. Um, tell me more about this. Strength. Three of wands. The moon. The fool. Five of Cups, Ace of Pentacles, Page of Cups, oh, shit. Queen of Wands. It looks like it. Tell me more about the moon. The strength is like, you know, it's like being strong, but it's also like taming yourself. It's like taming the beast within. So it's kind of like like working on yourself doing what you need to do um three of wands is like waiting for your ships to sail in the moon what is the moon about 
Five of Wands, Five of Swords. Yeah, there's hidden, there's hidden enemies or hidden drama, conflict, competition. I think it's kind of just reiterating what I was. Oh, I think what it's saying too is like, if this man is like waiting, like he's just waiting for, you know, the next best thing. It's like, he's going to find the same patterns, the same drama with like person after person. You know what I mean? But I think that this is going to come to light. So tell me more about this. King of Pentacles, Knight of Cups. Six of Cups, the Queen of Pentacles, the Knight of Swords, the Seven of Pentacles, Two of Pentacles, the Chariot. With this King of Pentacles, I almost feel like that might be also partially why he's coming through because he knows, like, I, I almost feel like she might end up being the one that's juggling here. I don't think she is now, but I just think that he knows this. Like, I think he feels like he can tell, let me, let me, let me reshuffle these because I put most of them out already. <laughs> let me reshuffle and get some final messages here. I think he can tell with this Empress High Priestess type that we're picking up on that, again, he has to come forward correctly. He has to make an effort. Even if he's, you know, again, he doesn't need to be perfect for her. He can be damaged. He can have trauma to work through. Like, he can, you know, as long as he's being honest and vulnerable with her and having those heart-to-heart -heart conversations and, you know, admitting when he's wrong, admitting his mistakes, and, you know, just just being willing to be honest and vulnerable, she will work with him. You know, if he's making the effort, if she sees that he's making the effort and he's, you know, expressing that love and, and really, you know, doing things differently, then she'll work with him. But with the King of Pentacles, it almost seems like he's kind of aware that if, if he doesn't do that, there is going to be a new man for her. Like, like his, like, he knows that the spirit guides around him are fed up with his situation. He, he knows that these spirit guides have tried to lead him to her for a long time and that he's, you know, again, denied the call to, to be vulnerable, to, um, to work on himself, to, to face himself, to, to take the mask off. He's denied that call for so long. So I think he has this awareness that his spirit guides are not only kind of impatient with, you know, how long it's taken him to just get on the right path and, and go through the psychic awakening and, you know, be vulnerable, be, be open, just admit when you're wrong, be willing to change your perspective and to relearn things, be willing to, to grow and evolve and, you know, be, be mindful of other people. Um, but I think he, he's aware that, it, that her spirit guides are also just kind of, you know, tired of the situation with, with them in general, like just not just with his personal life, but with, you know, the romantic life too. Like I said, they're not letting him do this to woman after woman after woman. He can't say that all these women are, are, are just dramatic and then you know each one happens to just be dramatic and it happens to be the same thing he eventually has to look in the mirror and, and you know realize he's got to be you know he might be part of that that problem part of that equation which which again is is you know there's nothing wrong with that once once you do that it's like you can change those things once you look in the mirror and you you know accept those things it's like you can change them you can you can really it's almost like he starts seeing that and then he freaks out and he gets prideful and he shuts down like, let's say, um, let's say women all just, you know, happen to get jealous and he, you know, maybe he starts looking at that pattern and starts kind of taking responsibility, but then his pride kicks in and he, he shuts down where if you, if he just looks at that, that issue just a little bit longer, he might be able to be like, okay, like, where does this stem from? Maybe this stems from, you know, childhood trauma or abandonment, fears of abandonment. Maybe he's afraid that people will leave him. So he wants to leave them before, you know, they can leave him, that kind of thing. And like, then he can get to the root of it and he can actually heal it if he's just honest about it. If he's honest with himself and about honest with the right people about it, maybe honest with the counselor about it. It's like he can change those patterns, but he, he, in the past, he's never let himself get far enough to start really changing those patterns. You know what I mean? But, um, but yeah, I think, I think his, I think this woman's spirit guys are kind of going to him and saying, Hey, like you don't have a lot of time left. Like you're either gonna, you're, you're gonna do this or, you know, we're bringing her somebody else. <laughs> 
And she can love this man with all, all her heart and soul, but they're, they're not gonna, you know, it, it, it's not, a, it's not about how much she loves him because she can love him more than anything in the world. She could, she could be devastated over him, but she still knows what she deserves. And, you know, she still needs attention and affection and effort like everybody else does. That's normal things to want. Um, okay. Tell me, so let's get some final messages. Tell me more about, you know, if he's making these changes and why he might be making these changes. 10 of wands, five of wands, the emperor, five of cups, the moon, the queen of swords, Yeah, he's he is afraid that he's losing her. He's afraid that she's going to be guarded with this Queen of Swords energy and Five of Cups. He's afraid. He hasn't... I mean, I think that she's guarding her, herself. I don't think she trusts him the way that... I think she used to really see this man as her safe space. Like, she used to be in a very feminine, gentle energy. I think she used to really just see him as her safe space. Like, that was, like, her home. That was her best friend. That was her forever person in her eyes. And I mean, I'm not saying that she doesn't see him that way now necessarily, but I don't think she sees him as a safe space for her so much anymore. I think that she feels like she has to be in the Queen of Swords. Otherwise, he just takes her for granted or he just breaks her heart. Um, he hasn't given her reason to be, you know, vulnerable. He hasn't given her any reason to feel like he's a safe space for her to just be vulnerable and just be herself. So I think that she's more, you know, more afraid and more guarded. And I think he's interpreting that as, as he's lost her, he's losing her, but it's, it's like, I mean, it could be to an extent too, you know what I mean? Like I said, she is more guarded. She doesn't trust him as much. So I think it's saying too, that he has to, and like, he, he has to let go of those burdens. He has to let, he has to learn those karmic lessons. He has to get through that and be the emperor. You know, like we we're talking about, he has to be the emperor. He has to fight for this. He has to be in that masculine energy and make the effort and do the healing work and be vulnerable and honest about, you know, all of it. Just just being just being willing to be vulnerable, being willing to make those life changes. And that's the only way that he's going to, you know, be with this empress. You know, I think she's still open to giving this a chance, but I mean, I wouldn't really wait on it too long. I don't think that's a good idea. Nine of Cups is a wish fulfillment justice. king of wands so it's almost like this bad karma too is teaching him like it's 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 not going to feel good to him in the moment it's going to feel it's going to be one of those things where he's going to look back on it and he's going to understand why it had to happen that way so it's like let's say like with all his friends and family members he's having like drama conflict right now it might be the universe also taking certain people out of his life so like if he had toxic people that maybe wanted to separate him from this empress those people might be being removed from his life. Like he's seeing their true colors. Um, or like I said, he might just be being called out on certain things and he has to take a look in the mirror. But it's ultimately for his wish fulfillment. It's ultimately like, it's it's a good energy. You know what I mean? It's divine justice. It's, it's you know, king of wands energy too. So it's like he can be this emperor, this king of wands. Um, like it's ultimately for his, you know, his highest good so that he can, it, it's, it's like he's being pushed. It's like a tower moment where he's being pushed to learn those karmic lessons quickly since he wasn't, you know, he wasn't doing it slowly. So, so he's going to look back on it. He's going to be like, okay, well, I needed that push because that, that showed me these patterns that I, I was trying to ignore. You know what I mean? Like he's going to ultimately be thankful for these life experiences, but yeah, in the moment, it's not going to feel good in the moment. It's just going to feel like just, you know, chaos and just, you know, one bad thing after another, but, but ultimately, yeah, he's going to, he, you know, he's, he's going to understand, he's going to have a higher perspective at some point and understand why that, that karmic balancing need to, needed to happen. Why that, you know, it's, it's pushing him on his, onto his best path, best path and onto, um, you know, being the man that he wants to be. The lovers, the queen of pentacles, knight of swords. And he might have some conflict with people. The fool, the sun. Hmm. 
Yeah, there's some kind of transformation taking place here. Yeah, he's going to have to learn to find that balance. I think he will. I think he's going to go towards somebody too. Eight of Wands, Six of Cups, like some like like nostalgia past energy to tell me more about this. Yeah, we keep getting the King of Pentacles, too, because so I think he's kind of aware. He's like, you know, again, there's going to be a King of Pentacles that comes in for this Empress if he doesn't get it together. Because um, it's like if he keeps, like, being blocked and just waiting for his ships to sail in and, like, just not being in a masculine energy, then it's, it's like the King of Pentacles comes in. That's his his spirit guides are kind of basically this man's spirit guides are working with him right now and they're giving him another chance. But it's like if he if he tries to do the same thing over and over again, it's it's if it like if he tries to play games or go back to old patterns or or just not be in an, an authentic energy, then he knows that like they're telling him that his spirit guides are telling him that like he might be having dreams about this woman with another man or he might just be intuitively feeling it like his spirit guides are pretty much telling him like you're either going to step up. Um, or she's going to end up with a king of pentacles instead. Like if he wants to wait, if he wants to do the same thing and just wait, like she's not making the first move. If he, if he keeps waiting and doing the same thing, he's going to lose her. Tell me more about this. Tell me, oh, well, let's, we're pretty deep into the reading. Let's get some final messages. Yeah, he wants to heal this. He wants, he wants balance. He wants, he wants two of cups. He doesn't want to be left out in the cold. He doesn't want to. And he's realizing how many times he left her out in the cold. How many times he abandoned her when she needed him. How many times, you know, he, you know, it's it's like how many times she was in that energy of feeling neglected, feeling alone, feeling sad, like longing for him. And he's wanting to heal this. He's wanting this two of cups with her. Yeah, new perspective. Yeah, again, he, he knows he's going to be blocked. He's going to be like hung up like this if he doesn't. You know, again, he's he's seeing her as the empress now, too. I think that's also a new perspective where I don't think he saw her as an empress before. I think he underestimated her, maybe thought she was naive. Yeah, he knows it's going to be another battle, though, to get past this devil energy. But Knight of Cups coming through, Son of Cups, Four of Wands. Yeah, he has multiple options. Again, some of them are an illusion, though. Some of them... He has multiple options. Only one is going to lead to true fulfillment, true love, true happiness, though. He can choose one of the karmic options or he can choose the the path that was originally destined for him. It's up to him. But um, but the ball is in his court. It's ultimately his choice now. So he has to he has to, you know, do the healing to be clear and get past the illusion. So he knows how to discern, to use his intuition, to choose the best options for him. Yeah, that truth and clarity, that divine intervention is coming through. Knight of Wands, Page of Wands, King of Cups. Six of Wands, Three of Cups. Yeah, it's, it's, again, some of these men want to, like, he's kind of torn. Some part of him is kind of, like, afraid of all these changes, and he's like, well, what if I, Three of Cups is, like, a third-party card a lot of times. I mean, it can be fun. It can be, like, a card, a card of, like, you know, fun and celebration. Some of these men do still honestly think, it's like they start planning the future with, like, this empress. Like, they start, like, really thinking about, like, the long-term, um, 
and like making those plans. But then some of them are like, well, maybe I'll take the easy way out. Maybe I'll have like this victory by just, you know, playing the field and having multiple options. They're going to end up single. Nine of Pentacles, the Hermit. The Hermit is a card all about like being alone, being introspective. They're going to end up with nobody. If they think that they can put somebody on hold or they think they can just go play the field and come back whenever, they're going to end up with absolutely nobody. They're going to end up not only not having this Empress, but not having the other options either. Like they're not, they're not getting away with it divine intervention their spirit guides are not letting them get away with it so yeah i mean i'm seeing some cards that do point to them changing because they know that they have to if they want this empress back they know that they know they don't really have a lot of time left they know that her spirit guides are going to bring her somebody that will actually love her um and will actually want her um if they don't um you know do something soon So, so, so yeah, they're still kind of up in the air, whether they want to go down a karmic path and learn these lessons. The hard, I mean, they're already, like I said, the mask is already ripped off. They're already learning a lot of these lessons the hard, the hard way. There already is a lot of conflict in their life and probably coming into their life. Um, and again, it's just karma. It's just like the spirit guides are just kind of taking care of that. They're not, again, not punishment, but just rebalancing. They're, they insisted on learning their lessons the tough, the hard way. But yeah, some of them are still going to try to distract themselves and take the easy way out and it's not going to go well for them. They're going to end up being left alone if they try that. I also feel like these women are going to like, like they, like it's not just this empress that, that knows about third parties. I feel like the other women are aware, like they're all aware of each other. They're all, you know what I mean? It's like, like this person might end up getting a bad reputation in the community, honestly. And it's not like people talking shit necessarily. It's just people like people are going to know, you know what I mean? Like people are just going to like secrets are there's nothing's going to be hidden. Secrets are coming out. So it's it's best to be honest and vulnerable and make the right choices. Um, and again, this is all just about, you know, getting this man on his, you know, to be his true self, to be on his highest path. But um Let's see. Because I think this, this Empress, I feel like she has this new perspective where she's like, it doesn't matter if if, you know, I see him as my best friend and the love of my life and my person, it doesn't, those things don't matter unless he sees me the same way. Like she has that new perspective where she's like, it doesn't matter how I feel unless he loves me back and he makes that same effort. You know what I mean? Like she, she wants the person that she loves to see. If she sees him as, as her best friend, she wants him to see her the same way. If she sees him as the love of her life, she wants him to see her the same way. And so I think, you know, like I said, her spirit guides are giving him that chance to be like, okay, do you feel that way? Are you going to show her that? Or are we going to bring her somebody else who is going to feel that way about her? Nine of Swords, Page of Pentacles. Yeah, they're having anxiety about making an offer, but, you know, they know that this offer that they make is going to lead to a Ten of Pentacles with the Empress. You know, stability, foundation, true love, everything. Um, but again, it's ultimately up to them whether they go down a karmic path or a destined path. They're kind of, the cards I'm getting are kind of pointing to them just being up in the air right now. They, they do kind of still have that part of them that just wants to escape and wants to be in denial. So, but, but again, they don't really have, um, it, they already have a lot of bad karma that's come in and there's going to be more coming in if they, if they try to play any games or they try to do the same shit as before. So they don't really have a... The, the easy path, they might take the easy path is what I'm saying, but it's not going to work out well for them. And they're also going to lose the Empress if they take the easy path, basically, is what I'm saying. So the ball is in their court right now. Um, If you're a feminine watching this, you know, you're basically being, if this is your story, you're basically being called to just rest, relax, and just let your spirit guides handle this, you know. um, Just stay in your power and you know, the right person is going to pursue you, whether it's this person or not, you know, if, if they really love you, they will come get you. 
If this person really loves you, they will make the changes. They're not going to put you, they're not going to put you on hold or have you as an option. If this person does really love you, they're going to come get you. They're going to step up and, and be a real man, be in the emperor energy, and they're going to pursue you and make the effort if you're really that important to them. So, you know, just know that and stand in your power. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always, if you want a private reading, my email is dragonenchantress at awol.com. That email is right below in the description box. And um, I really appreciate your comments too, because I'm trying to get back in the algorithm. So just even leaving a heart comment really helps me. Um, thank you guys.